This world is not my home, I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid off somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh Lord. Hi. My name is Mark Syme, the minister of the Northfield Church of Christ in Northfield, New Jersey. I would like to take this opportunity to welcome you to our evening services for Sunday, April the 30th. We will sing several songs. Our songbook at Northfield is Songs of Faith and Praise. I will give you the number and the name of the song. Perhaps you may not have that book. You may have another one, or you may be able to Google the song and sing along with us. The first song that we will sing is called A Common Love. In our book, it is number 705. 705, A Common Love. <clears throat> A common love for each other, a common gift to the Savior, a common bond holding us to the Lord. A common strength when we're weary, a common hope for tomorrow a common joy in the truth of God's word. Turn back one page to number 704. 704. And the title of this song is Bind Us Together. 704. Bind Us Together. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together, bind us together in love. There is only one God. There is only one King, there is only one body, that is why we can sing. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together with love. Before the Lord's Supper, we will sing number 763. O Master, let me walk with thee. 763. O Master, let me walk with thee. <clears throat> <clears throat> oh, Master, let me walk with Thee In lowly paths of service free Tell me Thy secret Help me bear the strain Of toil, of fret, of care Help me the slow of heart to move By some clear winding word of Teach me the way would be to stay and guide them in the homeward way in hope that sends a shining ray far down the view running way. 
In this bad home, thou canst give with thee, O Master. Let me live. It is now time to observe the Lord's Supper. It is a wondrous time. Uh, it is a joyous time. It is a time of remembrance. It is a time of remembrance that uh, God and his divine plans saw to it that uh, he would send his son, who would become not just the son of God, but the son of man to earth, that he would teach, that he would preach, but most importantly, that he would die on the cross, a one-time sacrifice for each one of us. And so as we reflect on that this evening, help us to remember uh, his body that was nailed to that cruel cross. Help us to remember the blood that was shed for us for the remission of sins and help us to understand the importance of that event. Let's pray for the bread. Our God, Heavenly Father, we're grateful that Jesus was willing to give up his body for us. We can't even imagine the pain that he went through as he was nailed to that cross. Uh, as we partake of this bread, we remember that body that hung upon the cross. We pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Pray for the fruit of the vine. As we gather about your table, we remember the blood that flowed from his head and his hands, his feet, and his side. We remember that it is life-giving blood. It is the blood of the Lamb. It is the blood that forgives us and washes our sins away. And so as we think of the blood and the, that oozed from his body as his life ebbed away, we remember how important that blood is to us as we partake of this fruit of the vine. Help us to do this in a way that you would be pleased with us. We pray it in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. We are also called upon to lay by and store on the first day of the week. Uh, that is very, very important to the work of the church. It's important to us to give back to the Lord that which is his own anyway. And so as we give, help us to remember uh, that it is for us to lay by and store. It is for us to take an account of what we have been blessed with and give uh, regarding what we have been blessed with. Help us in our giving that we would give with an open heart and open mind, knowing that these monies will be used in the way they should be. Let's pray. Bless us, dear Heavenly Father, as we give. Help us to remember all good gifts come from you. Help us to remember that you love a cheerful giver. And help us to remember that this is what we've laid by in store. This isn't just something that we think about when the plate is passed, but it's something that we think about during the week and remember how we're blessed and give commensurately. Bless us in our giving. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. If you will turn to song number 589. Oh, I'm sorry, I have the wrong song. Hold on a minute. Yep, it's the right song. 589. 589. Leaning on the everlasting arms. <clears throat> oh. 
What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning on Jesus, leaning on Jesus. Safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning on Jesus, leaning on Jesus. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how sweet to walk in this pilgrim way. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how bright the path grows from day to day, leaning on the everlasting arms, leaning on Jesus, leaning on Jesus, safe and secure from all alarms, leaning on Jesus, leaning on Jesus, Leaning on the everlasting arms. What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arms. I have blessed peace with my Lord so near. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning on Jesus, leaning on Jesus, leaning on the everlasting arms, leaning on Jesus, leaning on Jesus, leaning on the everlasting arms. That concludes our song service. I hope you enjoyed singing with us, and I pray that uh, we have been blessed by praising our Lord. You may have uh, gotten the gist of uh, the songs this morning. Uh, they have to do with fellowship. Uh, the last song that we sang, the opening line was, What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting uh, arms of God. And so I would like to start a, a lesson. Uh, it will be a two-part lesson, I think. Uh, we'll see what comes next week. And the lesson is about fellowship. If you've been in church circles very, very long, I think all of us uh, have heard the term fellowship. We talk about fellowship meals. Um, we talk about fellowship halls, places where people fellowship together. Uh, we tell about fellowship with other Christians. Um, uh, lots and lots of fellowship things. It's a word that gets thrown around, maybe uh, in a bit too much of a cavalier sense, but uh, the importance of fellowship is so great that uh, it cannot be overlooked. And so, I would like to take a look for uh, just a, a short time this evening and maybe continue it next week about what fellowship actually is. We'll look at definitions. We'll look at its uses in the Bible. The interesting word uh, for fellowship uh, in the Greek is koinonia. Okay, koinonia. Uh, fascinating word, K-O-I-N-O-N-I-A. Uh, the term, uh, if, I'm, uh, if I've turned into a bean counter, I'm not usually, occurs some 19 times in the New Testament. But other words which mean and have similar um, uh, uh, connections to the word fellowships are used more than 75 times in our New Testament. The, the simple definition, and maybe it's oversimplified, but uh, 
sometimes I've been accused of being a simple person, is close association involving mutual interests and sharing. Let me say that again, because I, I think it's a pretty good definition. Close association involving mutual interests and sharing. Now, this word very often is translated as sharing, communion, fellowship, partnership, participation. Can we see the common thread in all of those? Sharing, is that fellowship? Communion with one another, is that a fellowship? Partnership, participation, all of those are somewhat synonyms to the term fellowship. The basic idea, I think, is something people share in common that enables them to work closely together. You know, uh, when people are in their workplace, in order for the job that needs to be done to get done, especially when it is a, a collaborative effort, people have to be on the same page. And again, that is a type of fellowship. In 1 John chapter 1 and verse 3, 1 John chapter 1 verse 3, it says, What we have seen and heard we proclaim to you also, so that you too may have fellowship with us, and indeed our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son and Jesus Christ. All right, let's read that again. It's a rather important scripture, and it contains this word koinia, fellowship. And it says, what we have seen and heard, we proclaim to you also, so that you too may have fellowship with us. And indeed, fellowship And indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And so we have John writing and saying, I want to have fellowship with you just as we have fellowship with God the Father and Jesus Christ. Therefore, we complete the circle that all will have fellowship. Now understand, uh, and I use the term, uh, when on second Sundays we have a meal together, I like to call it a fellowship meal, but fellowship is more than a meal. It's more than Christians getting together for fun. Uh, it's more than a name, uh, of a space in your building because the room just aside our auditorium is called our fellowship room. If I were define, to define fellowship in my own words, it would be this. Here we go. Fellowship is a relationship you have with God that you also have with others and have who have that same relationship with God. The reason that we meet together with fellow Christians is we are all tied to living godly lives. And that involves how we view God and our fellowship with God. Fellowship, I believe, is what connects us or binds us together, like we sang in that song, Bind us together, Lord. Bind us together, Lord. Bind us together in love. Fellowship is that unique relationship we share because of how we feel about God. And because of the way we feel about God, we are able to work together. We're able to share in certain things together. 
We're able to help each other. We're able to meet each other's needs and more and more and more. Why? We're on the same page. That's fellowship. Being on the same page. That same page is we all are interested in doing the Lord's work. Now, there's more than this. There's a, 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 an extended beauty in fellowship. And that is true in that it's not just limited to our congregation, like our congregation that meets here at 2535 Shore Road in Northfield. But it stretches out to everyone who has that same relationship with God. Isn't it interesting if you travel and you visit churches uh, on your traveling and, and notice that they are doing things pretty much the same as you are because they're trying to follow New Testament pattern. And, and we love to see the fellowship that Christians in other congregations have and uh, kind of mirror the fellowship that we have in our own congregations. So if someone is what we like to term a New Testament Christian, you have fellowship with them, and it's a unique relationship. I can worship someplace a thousand miles from my home, and I can feel that fellowship because they are striving toward the same end. It gives you uh, family-minded people uh, because we share this unique relationship, and it's it's worldwide. It gives people that you are connected with a reason to understand what fellowship actually is. And so let's, let's take a look at the, the next idea of fellowship. Um, so we have defined it and let's look at a few passages in our Bible that I believe reflect what fellowship is all about. When Paul, I'm sorry, when Peter uh, preached the first gospel sermon on the day of Pentecost in the second chapter of the book of Acts, and uh, we know that uh, he preached to them and 3,000 souls were saved and baptized that day. If we look in Acts chapter 2 and verse 42, and, and I find this to be not only interesting, but almost to the extent of being fascinating. Acts chapter 2, 42 says, they were continually devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to the prayers. Huh. To me, this passage reveals to us that fellowship is something that baptized believers should devote themselves to. Fellowship, that's what they were doing. They didn't have a Bible to read from in Acts chapter 2, 42. They had the apostles' teaching, and so they stayed in the apostles' teaching and to the prayers and to the fellowship with each other. Another scripture that I would like us to look at is 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 16. Let's read this one. Is not the cup of blessing which we bless a sharing in the blood of Christ? Is not the bread which we break a sharing in the body of Christ. There we go. That synonym for fellowship again, sharing. The word sharing is the same Greek word, the same root word as fellowship. The idea that something we participated in just a few minutes ago in the Lord's Supper, the same idea is that the Lord's Supper we take each week is a form of fellowship for Christians. 
How do I know that? The scriptures bear it out. It's not me making this up. This is too good to be made up. Is not the cup of blessing, the fruit of the vine that we drink, a sharing in the blood of Christ? Is not the bread that we break, a sharing in the body of Christ? It's for Christians, a sharing in the sacrifice that God allowed Jesus to make for each one of us. And it's that sharing that makes it so important for us. Otherwise, we wouldn't gather together on the first day of the week. It is about fellowship. And then look at Philippians chapter 1 and verse 5. Philippians 1 verse 5. In view of your, here we go again, another synonym. In view of your participation in the gospel from the first day until now. Do you get that? In view of your participation in the gospel, Paul wrote, your fellowship in the gospel. You, you actively got in to the gospel. Paul was thanking the brethren in Philippi who financially supported him doing, during his ministry. Uh, uh, and he, he said that in Philippians chapter 4, verse 15. And he called it participation. Same Greek word for fellowship. Participation in the gospel. You supported the good works. The Philippians, the church at Philippi, gave money to the Apostle Paul so that he can carry out his evangelistic efforts. We do that. We did that when we gave back to the Lord, fervently hoping and praying that those that have charge of those monies will use them the same way that the Apostle Paul did to further the work of God. It enables Christians to participate together in spreading the gospel. Those of us that have had to work all of our lives could not become missionaries. It doesn't mean that we can't support missionaries. It doesn't mean that we can't support mission work. At our church, we attempt to do that. We attempt to support mission work in other parts of the world. In our congregation, we have a uh, large contingent of brethren from the Dominican Republic, and we help support works, uh, Christian works, in the Dominican Republic. These scriptures that I read from Acts and from 1 Corinthians and Philippians reveal to us that hmm, this special relationship that Christians share called fellowship is deeper than just a relationship. It, it, it's, it's a relationship on steroids. It's taking a relationship to the next level. And it's something that Christians ought to be devoted to. Again, not me talking. Acts 2.42 says that they were devoted to the apostles' teaching and fellowship. They were devoted to sharing the Lord's Supper with one another. They were devoted to uh, participate with the apostle Paul in spreading the word. That's fellowship. It is something that Christians very much need to be devoted to. It, it's sharing in the remembrance of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's participation in the spreading of the gospel together. And, and these little, I guess you may call them nuances of fellowship, show us some of the beauty that uh, surrounds this unique relationship we share in. You know, we ought to 
pray often about the wonder uh, and the blessing that we have to share with one another, to share the gospel with one another as we worship, to lift our voices up together and share the praising, to gather about the Lord's table and share the participation of the remembrance of Jesus' sacrifice, that we pray together in a communal way, that we pray for those that uh, have asked for our prayers, that we, that we listen to the word of God being uh, preached to us. All of these things are sharing, and they're all a part of what we do. They're all a part of our fellowship. Uh, maybe next week, and I'm, I'm, I'm pondering this, uh, we will look at maybe some of the warnings about Christian fellowship and uh, take a look at that. Uh, I just pray that you understand that, that this fellowship is all about the fellowship of New Testament Christians who have become children of God. If you have not become a child of God, we offer you that opportunity this evening. If you know that after you've heard the word, you realize that you need to confess Jesus as the Son of God, to repent of your former lives and be baptized for the remission of your sins, we offer you that invitation this evening. If you want to do it immediately, you can get in touch with one of us. If the next time that we meet, uh, you want to take that opportunity, we're ready at your beck and call. If you need to come to the Lord, we just pray that uh, you will do that this evening. Let's all pray as we end our services. Bless us, dear Heavenly Father, as we think about the fellowship that we have in you. As we think about the wonders that we have and participation and sharing with one another and the sharing with our uh, most holy God, bless us, dear Heavenly Father, and help us in all things to desire to do your will. Be with those that are on our prayer list that uh, have asked us to pray for them, realizing the prayers of faithful men are rich and powerful. Bless us this evening and help us as we put our heads on our pillows to understand some of the important aspects of our Christian lives, one of them being the fellowship that we have in you. Continue to bless us. Continue to be with us. We pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Please be safe and may God bless you all. Oh,